If you didn't get a dog during the pandemic, you probably know somebody who did. The pandemic puppy boom, it's a real thing in Toronto. I never have to worry. <laughs> no, they're fine. One second. Lily! Hey! She just likes to eat poopsicles. <laughs> like, there's parks that I avoid at certain times. But too many dogs in too few spaces is leading a lot of people to wonder, can the off-leash dog parks we have even handle it? Neck was like ripped open and he needed stitches and stuff. What we really want is a master plan. We have a master plan for things like transit and for housing, and other Canadian cities have one, but we don't have one for dog parks. So we're going to find out why and what would be gained by planning ahead. In 2019, the city estimated there were 300,000 dogs in Toronto, a number that is clearly only growing, putting pressure on the 75 off-leash dog areas and leading many dog owners to get strategic. What's uh, the dog's name? Riley. Riley, what a cute dog. Oh, he's going to play up to uh, <laughs> I like coming in the off hours. Because, Why is that? Because it's too busy. Did you know that the city estimates yeah. that every floor of these new builds is bringing four to eight dogs? Seriously. Every floor. Oh, I'm not surprised. Have you seen fights? Of course. There's always fights. Between people or dogs? Both. <laughs> Which one looks worse? Dogs. They make more noise. <laughs> Well, I looked at you and I'm like, man, we have an athlete that's missing the Olympics over there. What's I happening? Get a lot of, I get a lot of questions about it, so probably not <laughs> too bad for my ego. Hi, Arthur. Hi, buddy. Is this the dog park you come to most often? Um, when I'm in Canada, yeah. Oh, where are you from? You're, wait a I'm second. From, here. <laughs> I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I have yet to see it too crowded. Um, I'll see it like 1230-ish normally. There's some dog walkers that bring dogs here and they don't have total control of their big group of 15 or so and like 15? Like well 15. 15 or so I don't know this one lady had like 10 and I'm exaggerating you take him in Cincinnati to one that's part of his daycare that everybody that belongs to it it's a, you have to pay for it have you have like to pay a, for the dog park uh-huh it's so this is like a membership only so every dog that goes a has membership a, well, only dog park a private dog park is cool because all the dogs have passed the test and I don't think know. a private dog park would fly in Toronto yeah Listen to this American. This American comes parks. to Canada and tells us to privatize our dog parks. Yeah. That is what you just said. It is what I just said. <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Close. Dog poo bags can go in the garbage bin and they can go in the green bin and yet they always go on the ground. Look, there's one right there. I mean, the dogs are very happy to be left free. Mm -hmm. So they get all worked up and they approach my little dog and they want to play, but they don't realize their size. Yeah, but what do you think would be the impact of better dog infrastructure on those dogs that are playing outside the dog park coming up and approaching dogs like yours? So, I mean, I don't think personally that's where the money should go. I think the money should go to better playgrounds for the kids. Hi, Chris. The group Toronto Dog Park Community thinks the city should spend the cash developing a dog park master plan, and so they've launched a petition to pressure Toronto City Council. It's not just affecting the dog-owning population, it's affecting all the population. How so? so, like, you want everybody to utilize this park, but because there's fights in this park because of the crowding or because people don't want to use the surface, people are using the field. And then you have a confrontation between non-dog owners and dog owners. So right now the city is going through a budget process for the next fiscal year and I know that you guys just spoke to councillors and presented your petition and explained to them the want for this master plan. Yes. What was the reaction like from councillors? Some are are in support. Oh, you sound pretty but, hesitant with but that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's one or two, yeah. It's not the priority at the moment. And I can understand there's a lot of other issues, but this is something that's going to be a big glut of dogs that have nowhere to go. And it's, it could be dangerous. The City of Toronto sent us a statement criticizing a citywide approach, saying they prefer seeing what individual neighborhoods need. But since Vancouver is one of several Canadian cities with a dog park master plan, we connected with Vancouver's planning office to find out why they think that works better. 
We learned uh, where some of our highest need areas were in terms of we got to sort of have a bit of a heat map in the city of where our dog population was. What do you think about pushback around the fact that a master plan is less desirable because it doesn't address the specific needs of a neighborhood? And our approach was to do a master plan to gather the information and understand the system and then do a level of community engagement. What would you say to some, some community that does not have one? So not every community is going to be able to afford or allocate the time or resources to something like that, but I think really looking at what problem are you trying to solve before you come up with a design. What do you think it would look like or feel like for everybody, dog owner or not, if they actually had a plan? I think that people would be happier, it would gravitate more, people would be using the dog park more than the streets. So we rely on this dog park. This is, this is a place for us to come to and feel that our dogs are safe.